Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to cover declarations as well as recycling inside of R. This will be the second video related to vectors specifically, but let's just dive on in. So in some languages like C or C++, you would have to declare a variable before you're able to use it. Um, examples of this would be like declaring the variable x, and we'd say that we want to make sure that it is an integer. So you'd have to put in you know, integer x, and that would be able to assign uh, x to an integer category. And then afterwards, you could assign something um, to that x, so you could put an integer inside of that. Um, other examples would be like declaring like a double, for example, and declaring that it's going to be y, and that you'd put something else inside of that. So in R, so again, let's add a little note here. You know, this would be a C language, which requires a declaration. So scripting languages such as Python uh, do not require us to do any declarations. And so you can do stuff in R just like you can in other scripting languages, um, such that you could assign some values such as 10. And I'll show you here, we'll copy this. You can run it. Uh, and you can see now that Z is going to be 10. However, one thing that you cannot do inside of R is um, you, you have to declare um, a vector before you can use it. So an example of what you cannot do, so cannot do uh, would be something such as, let's take um, X and we're gonna create a vector. And we're gonna say it's gonna be one element and then we're gonna assign, I don't know, say 12 to this value. And then we want to take the same vector and we want to put in the second spot uh, another value, let's say, I don't know, 31. Um, if we run these, you can see here that it won't actually do what we expect. Great, it's gonna say there is an error. Um, object X is not found. So in this case, when we're doing vectors, we actually have to create the vector first. So if we were gonna actually create this vector X, what we would need to do is, and again, so in the beginning here, right, I'm telling you that um, you don't need to declare things such as integers or an object, but it's important to note that you have to declare things such as a vector or what goes inside of a vector. So in this example, um, you can just declare that we're gonna have a vector and it's going to be length is going to be equal to two. And then what we want to put inside of this is that we would like to have, um, in this case, we can use the exact same code from above but now since we have an empty vector here, we're able to fill this vector with 12 and 31. So if you copy this and paste this, you'll see now that, again, in the top right, we have a vector with 12 and 31. And if you'd like to see this, you can just type in X and hit enter, and it'll show you um, that we have a vector with the two values that we like to place inside. Okay, and something else that you guys have seen me do in past videos, and we're gonna continue doing it, is, um, using the bind function, which is going to be called C, um, to create vectors. All right, so you've seen me do something such as Y is going to be equal to C, which creates this vector for us here. Um, let's just put 21 and 18 inside. And if you run this down here, uh, you'll see that it creates uh, Y and it has 21 and 18 inside. The reason you can do this without essentially declaring is because of the way that vectors work. And what we're actually doing in this code is this C is a function. This function is actually creating the vector by declaring it and then adding in the 21 and the 18. And then since we create this vector, we then assign the vector um, the name or essentially the value here of Y so that we can actually call it. And so the reason why we can't just essentially create a vector in this example up here without declaring it is because the way that R handles vectors somewhat like a functional language. And the reason being is that everything inside of the vector functioning inside of R, um, it has to have functions to do things, okay? So they're not actual, like each element inside the vector isn't like its own independent object. Um, they all belong to a vector and vectorization or using all this, you know, processing in a vector format inside of R, which is what makes it fairly unique, uh, is also why you have to declare things when doing vectors. And one more thing in this video is that you can also do things where you don't have to specify the mode. So like I mentioned before, in languages like C++, you'd have like, you know, integer, 
um, is going to be, I don't know, two, and then you would have like char, which can be your character is gonna be like, I don't know, ABC, something like that. But you can't do this in, in, uh, in R here. But what we can do here, so we could take something such as, I don't know, ABC, and we could assign it um, something such as, I don't know, one, two, three, four, and you can run this. And as we've talked about before, um, this is going to give you your vector with one, two, three, four. And we can do something such that, you know, ABC is going to be equal to, I don't know, let's just call it ABC again, and you can run this. And now we have ABC, which is ABC. So the first example, right, when we wrote ABC, uh, it's gonna be a numerical vector. The second one here is going to be character format. And so the point is, is that in R, it reassigns ABC. Again, I like to view it like a pointer, right? ABC is going to be pointing to this vector that has numbers. Um, but in this case, ABC is going to be reassigned uh, and it's going to be pointing out of this new object, which is going to be a character. Okay, so the next topic we wanna to talk about is gonna be called recycling. And recycling inside of R um, is pretty useful and it's also very frustrating if you don't understand it. Um, let's just do an example quickly here to explain what recycling is. So let's say we have um, C, we're gonna create some vector. We're gonna have one, two, three, and we want to add this to another vector. Um, let's just say, you know, this is going to be 10, 12, 14, 16, and we'll just leave it at that. We're gonna add these two together. So we'll clear the screen, paste this below, and now it's gonna give us a warning message, okay? And it's gonna say, uh, longer object length is not a multiple of shorter object length, but it does do some calculation here, okay? So what it actually does, what we call recycling, uh, the recycling component is actually taking the first element of the vector, adding it to the first of the second one. So we should get 11, which you see down here. And then it does the second one, which is two plus 12, gives you 14. And then it does three plus 14, which is going to give you 17. And then the question is, is where does this final 17 come from? Well, R likes to do recycling. So it takes the shorter vector and it repeats it. So now it's gonna go back to the beginning and it's gonna say one plus 16 is going to be equal to 17. So let's just do a second example here. Uh, but let's do something where it's a multiple so you can kind of see this a little bit easier. Uh, let's just say, okay, C equals, let's do two, four, six. And then we'll add in, you know, another vector and we'll do it where it's exactly double the length. So it's 12 or six in total. So you can see this here. Uh, let's just say it's uh, two, four, six, eight, 12, and then 14. Let's just add these together real quick. And you'll see um, it does the output, but it doesn't give you the warning. And the reason being is that the shorter list is being recycled. However, um, since it's a multiple, so there's three here and there's six here and three goes into six, um, it's not gonna give you the warning message. So it's important to know this recycling function because if not, uh, it'll cause errors. And you'll be frustrated on why this is happening. But let's just do the math quickly. So two and two is four, which we see down here then four and four is eight, six and six is 12. Um, and then we start over here, it's going to be eight plus two. So we'll do two plus eight, and that gives us 10. And then it recycles again, right? So going four to 12 should give us 16. And then finally, we end up with six to 14, and this is going to be 20. So this seems like, wow, this is broken, it shouldn't do this, but you'll see when we start programming later, that's actually quite handy to do this. Um, it has some advantages in the way that we program. All right, so we're gonna create a matrix here and it's going to be equal to um, some list here. So let's just do a list example and let's stick with our original one, two, three, four, five, six, because what we're gonna end up is a two by three matrix. And they're gonna say, you know, number of rows is equal to three and then number of columns is going to be equal to two. And then we're gonna to want to end, yes, we already ended this matrix here. And we copy and paste it below. Uh, and it's gonna give us our matrix up here. So you can click it and it'll show you the little table. It's not important. Uh, you can also just type in capital M for our matrix. And it'll give you one, two, three, four, five, six, which is what we expected. 
So now what we want to see is, you know, how how does this function? So how does this function? You know, this recycling here uh, with matrices. So we're going to cover matrices and arrays in future videos, but this will give you an example of how the vectorization and recycling works. Um, so we already created this matrix, and let's just say we're going to take M and we're going to add to it um, this little vector here. Or we're going to say three and four. And we're going to hit enter, and let's run this below. You can print it out. Actually, let's assign it to something so we can print it and see it a little easier. So let's put new equals this. Okay, let's copy this, paste it below. Okay, we're gonna type out new so we can see the table. Uh, and you'll see here it's four, six, six, eight, eight, ten. It's kind of odd. Okay, so you can see here that it's gonna end up recycling this smaller list on this larger list of a matrix. But remember, the matrix goes in order of the first column and row, and it goes down that column of one, two, three. Then it goes down the second one, four, five, six, like one long vector. So simply here, you know, three plus one is gonna give you four, which is down here. And then four plus two is gonna give you six. And then three plus three is gonna give you six again. And then we start on the next column here, which is gonna be eight. So this will be four plus four is eight. And then three plus five is gonna give you eight again. And then finally, four plus six gives you 10. So this is important to note because realistically what this really looks like is going to be um, the first matrix here, which is going to be C. So if you had this vector of one, two, three, four, five, six, and then if you just add it into it, um, three, four, three, four, three, four. And then if you just run this real quick, we can look at it. All right, it's gonna give you the same numbers, four, six, six, eight, eight, ten. But you can see here that R handles these in a vector format. So this should not be confused with linear algebra. And if you were to do like matrix multiplication, for example, um, you're gonna get very different results. So you have to remember R does everything inside of a vector. Anyways, that's how declarations work inside of R. Uh, that's kind of the inner workings of how R works for vectorization. We're going to keep going down this path um, because this is how R works and functions as a language. Everything is vectorized and it goes through each and every element within that vector. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.